I have opened the Titanic data set and I'm going to have a look at just running a basic chi-square test and then in the next video I'll look at doing exactly the same thing with logistic regression. So a very a simple logistic regression equation will be give you equivalent results to the chi-square test. Uh, and the benefit of logistic regression of course is that you can add more variables in. So we use a chi-square test when our our dependent variable is in categories instead of continuous which is what we've looked at so far. For the chi-squared test you can have any number of categories. With logistic regression the dependent variable needs to just have two. If you have more than two categories you'd actually be using um, multinomial regression or just some other variant which I'm not going to cover. So for the Titanic, our main outcome of interest obviously is whether whether or not people survived. And we've got a few things that we would think would affect survival. One of them would be gender. Um, one of them might be the passenger class or the ticket fare they pay. So some kind of measure of wealth. Um, perhaps the age as well. There are some other variables in this data set. I don't think we're going to need them. So for a simple chi-square test, let's just look at the difference between survival um, between the sexes. So to begin with, there's not a lot of assumptions. We do just need to check that we've got the right type of variables and we also need to check that we don't have any very low expected cell counts. Um, and SPSS will give us a warning about this if there's a problem with the data. So if you've got any categories where you don't expect to have very many people in them, um, let's say you had actually co coded a third level of intersex people or uh, fluid gender or some other didn't want to state their gender and this had very, very few people in it, then you might not be able to include that in the test because there wouldn't be enough there. Um, as I said, SPSS will give us a warning about this. So first of all, let's just have a look at it so we know what to expect. So to graph two categorical variables, we can use um, a clustered or a stacked bar chart. How you do this is up to you. I, If there's counts, I generally prefer a clustered bar chart so I can look at the counts. If I'm using a percentage, I would actually, I usually prefer a stacked bar chart if there's not too many um, categories and this is just personal choice. So what I'm going to do is just to illustrate the difference if I just do one as counts and we'll have a look at now I would like to see within each sex and I do just have two just ignore this preview it's wrong um, within each sex males and females what was the survival so I'll put survival as the color you could do it the other way around you could say within the people who survived or died um, what was the gender split and that would be fine too. Um, so we've got survive 0, 1 and 0 will be died so I think actually probably we should uh, code that in to make the graph a little easier to read. So I'm just going to quickly pop in 0 is died and 1 is survived. So let's just run that again. And thank you, of course, to the historians who collated this data and made it available for everyone on the web. Okay, so now we have died and survived. So overall, there were more men travelling on the Titanic than women, which is probably not a surprise. This is just before the First World War. Um, so early 1900s, possibly um, young men have a lot more capacity to travel, particularly by themselves, I would think, than women. Um, however, we can see that the survival looks a lot higher in the women. Now, when we've got very different sample sizes, it's a little bit difficult to compare proportions directly. So we might want to change this from being a count to being a percentage. So over on the right, we can change that to percentage. Now, the way you do this is up to you. I would like to have it out of each x-axis category. And that will tell me out of all the females what percentage survived and died and then out of the males what percentage survived and died. I feel like that's possibly the most intuitive way of looking at it. Um, so here we can see that out of the men nearly 80% or around 80% died 
and for the women, um, maybe 27, um, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent died. So this is looking pretty compelling and you would think from this that we will find a significant difference in survival between the genders. But let's go ahead and run that test. So to run a chi-squared test we're going to analyse descriptives and cross tabs and this is also what we would use if we wanted to cross tabulate two categorical variables. It doesn't matter which way around you have your rows and your columns, mathematically the test is the same. However, it may help you interpret the output or present the output um, if you have them a particular way. Now I think when we've done stuff in OpenEpi, Open it's always put the exposure in the rows. So the exposure in this case would be sex and the outcome or the disease in OpenEpi, which is um, the dependent variable, would be survived. So that will give us a basic cross tabulation um, of how many fall into each each category. So 127 women died and 339 survived. What we would also like is the chi-squared analysis. So we can pull that up under statistics. I don't know why all my things keep popping up on the other screen. There we go, chi-square. Now because we've only got two levels in each of these categories we can also get the odds ratio out and that will be under risk. If you had three categories here, SPSS would not calculate the odds ratio for you because it doesn't know which two you want to compare. So odds ratios always compare two things and if you've got three then it just doesn't do it. However, you can do the same analysis with a logistic regression equation and get your odds ratios that way. Or you could calculate them by hand of course, except that you won't get confidence intervals in that case. Now if you remember back to doing this test by hand, whenever you did that way back when, you may also want your expected cell counts just to have a look at them and you might want your residuals. I'm not going into that in this course, you have seen it before, whether or not you're a member of course, um, but for the purposes of this we're probably more interested in interpreting the odds ratios than having a look at the, the details, the nuts and bolts behind the chi-squared test, but just to let you know that that is there if you need more information. Okay, so we get our cross tabulation out, always worth having a look at, just check nothing stupid has happened. Um, if you're expecting two categories and you end up with four, male, female, zero, one, that means like you've got some kind of coding problem, so it's worth checking that. Chi-square test, so we're interested in the top row here. The null hypothesis is that there is no difference in survival between the genders or that the proportion of survival is the same between the genders or that there is no association between gender and survival or that gender and survival are independent of each other. So you can word that null hypothesis in lots of different ways. We've got very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and that will tell us that there is some kind of difference in survival between the genders, which we knew of course, we could see that right here. So we will also take a quick look at this warning, zero cells have an expected count less than five. So that is telling us that we have got plenty of data, there is no problem here. If you get a warning here, um, if you've only got two categories, there's not a huge amount you can do about it except collect more data next time. If you've got a few categories, um, then you might look at and see if it's sensible to combine some of them. So sometimes if you do this with, um, let's say you were looking at smoking and you had smoked two packs a day, smoked one pack a day, smoked a lot, smoked not very much and don't smoke at all and you didn't have very many in that really upper end, you might combine a couple of the smoking categories into just heavy, medium and low or even combine the medium and low smoker versus non-smoker. So if you've got categories which are next to each other conceptually and you can combine them, that's what you would do to fix this problem here. So that's our chi-square test. Now what we would also be interested in looking at just for from an epidemiological point of view, we're always interested in the odds ratio. 
The difficulty here is that it's actually compared males to females. So it's given us the odds ratio um, for females dying compared to males dying. And because women were at much lower risk, this is actually a little bit difficult to interpret. Odds ratios are easier to interpret when they're above one. That is, if we compare the risky category or behavior to the non-risky category or behavior, it tends to be easier to interpret. In this case, comparing the risk for men dying or the odds for men dying to women dying would be easier to interpret because they were the ones that were at the higher risk. Now the only way that I know of to force these into um, the opposite way around, someone please post and correct me if I'm wrong, is just to recode that and to make the males come first. So as far as I know it just goes alphabetically or numerically. So F comes before M so that gets compared that way. So what we can do is either code the males as 0 and females as 1 or we could put an A in front of the males and a B in front of the females so that it went A to B. To recode your data, it's actually quite quick, you just say recode. I always go into a different variable just in case I stuff anything up. Um, I'll just call this gender and I'll give it a label of gender. Old and new values. The old value was male and now I want this to be A. Oh tell it that it's a string, otherwise it expects a number, A, male and female. Now this needs to be exactly how it is in the data, no capitals, no spaces, nothing else and B, female. Your new value of course you can call it whatever you want. So we get a little bit of output there telling us that it's done it. I recommend that you go into your data and double check that you've got it there. There we have it. So if we rerun that test, cross tabs, and I'll pop out sex and put in our new coded one of gender, we get the same analysis. It hasn't changed anything here, but now our odds ratio is the odds of dying for men compared to women, which is 11.3. And that's much easier to interpret than the very small one of women to men. So it's saying that men were at a much risk, greater risk of dying. For every one female who died um, on the Titanic, there are 11.3 men who died. So that's a really huge increase in risk. Um, and the confidence interval for that odds ratio, which you would need if you were reporting this, goes from 8.6 to 14.7, which is well, well, well above 1. So it's definitely significant, which we could see here. So in the next video, I'll do this again um, using logistic regression.